Derek Lively II earned high praise from four-time All-NBA first team player Luka Doncic after his NBA debut. Uh, he didn't seem like being nervous, so uh, he played fucking amazing. Uh, sorry, sorry. It's the first game, we're getting back into it. No <laughs> Outdueling Wemby, the springy menace chosen with the 12th overall pick out of Duke was a game high plus 20 off the Dallas bench, grabbed a beastly five offensive boards, and became the first rookie in over 40 seasons with 15 and 10 on 80 plus percent shooting in the season opener. With Doncic dropping 33, 13, and 10, Irvin chipping in 22 and 6, plus 6 Mavs in total, including former Boston Celtic Grant Williams scoring in double figures, Derek holding down the middle by logging a more than productive 31 minutes as your traditional screen setting, rim protecting, and monster finishing center, gives the backcourt shot creating prominent Mavs exactly what they've been lacking. The Dallas Mavericks are back. And you're about to see exactly why, featuring a breakdown of Lively's eye poppin' debut, some patented Luka magic, and much more. Right quick, just 13% of you watching right now are subscribed to your boy though, so splash thumbs up and turn on notifications if you haven't yet, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow your boy on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Thank you a ton for any bit of support, back to the content. After a shockingly bad season where they missed the playoffs despite trading for Kyrie Irving mid-season, owner Mark Cuban and GM Nico Harrison hitting the jackpot with the third last pick in this year's draft lottery gives the Mavericks a huge boost. Derek Lively II's playbook IQ, positioning, athleticism, and fearless finishing more than filled in for the absence of Dwight Powell on opening night. As the second pick setter in this double on-ball action, an elusive ghost screen and hard slip to the basket allows Derek to beat three spurs to the paint, where no one's there to box him out after the Kyrie miss. High two-man game with Lucas, he's the product of Duke set a lively big body, get a momentum gathering wide roll, and fluently time up his steps to anticipate the Doncic law before lunging directly over Zach Collins for the poster. Speaking of Collins, this time in semi-transition, he loses track of Derek for merely a split second, but that's enough time for Luka to thread the needle over Wemby for a high entry, which Lively intelligently gathers by coming down first and reversing it home. After Jones Jr. comes up short on the floater, even with Collins boxing out Lively perfectly, Derek's 7'8 wingspan plus 40-inch vertical jump allow him to snatch it anyway, and take in the finesse to plant his left pivot and shift his way around the contest of two San Antonio defenders. Space clearing on ball gets Luca a right baseline attack, and with his near 8-foot reach center on the roll, a one-handed high arc and lob pass despite Collins again being in position sees Lively again elevate right over top him and throw in a ridiculous finish in heavy traffic. Sequence of the night right here after Wemby's too quick to leak out features DL2 first tapping out the Hardaway miss in between Osman and Sohan to keep one possession alive, then flying back right into the paint for one of the best putback throwdowns you'll ever see for a second O board in a single possession. This kid is going to be special and needs more attention given he was the best big man prospect in 2023's draft outside of Victor Wembanyama and has proven to be all that and more, albeit in the very early going of the 82 game grind. Meanwhile, Luka's insane triple-double saw him utilize a Batman flare screen and sauce up Sohan with a patented double hezzy and tween step-back triple, find Maxi Kleba for a deep-range bomb with a behind-the-back around Sohan, spin left through Sohan on the fast break before banking it home, Smitty move around the Collins drop coverage and pump fake around the trailing pressure of Sohan, wither his way through Wemby and craft his way in for the floater, moving jab and stop on a dime for a wide-open look from the elbow, dominate multiple times with simple downhill pick-and-roll penetration, X Execute from deep after hitting Osman with a triple tween and moving jab combo, pass fake in multiple directions to fool the rim protection of Collins and lay it home, back down and Dirk fade over KJ from the post, utilize consecutive lively on balls to attack to his left and switch back to his right while embracing the trail and contact of KJ for the and one, drive and kick to the corner to find Kyrie for the clutch triple, find Kyrie again on the fast break for another clutch bucket, and to seal the game, hit Vassell with an MJ tween in both directions followed by a one-quarter drive entry and moving jab step back before knocking it down despite both Devin and Victor closing out. It was typical Luka magic and he had more than enough help from elite second option Kyrie Irving. We have to give it more time to see if it's legit, but my early reaction to Uncle Drew's second campaign in Dallas is being impressed with his combination of humbleness and productivity. The roster's lone NBA champion is bought into being the number two behind Luka, something Kevin Durant couldn't properly get him to do. Back in Brooklyn, it was like Durant was the 1A and Kyrie was the 1B, whereas in the Big D, Irving is well aware that his role is to set up Doncic and provide as much scoring support as possible while being both a secondary ball handler and leader. It also means being the spot-up shooter a lot more. 
Dallas finished just 8-12 with Irvin last season after he was dealt from the Nets to Mavs at last year's deadline, so look for him to be motivated to prove that stretch of games was merely a fluke as the 23-24 season progresses. Nonetheless, time will tell for a player that's openly wanted out of his situation multiple times over the past few years. For now, Jason Kidd seems to have gotten this squad 1-15 through 15 to buy into their roles, including Cuban and Harrison's marquee pickup 24-year-old 5-year pro out of Tennessee and stretch big Grant Williams. More than living up to his $12 million cap hit in the early going, Grant posted 17-6 and six in Game 1, and at that type of level, if he can be somewhat consistent for the first time as a pro, that takes Dallas to another level. You have to respect Grant's quick, high arc and release from outside, as when he gets it going, the man can be a damn good floor spacer. His ability to force opposing bigs out to the perimeter will open up lanes for the likes of not merely Luka and Kyrie, but high-volume attackers off the bench in Hardaway Jr. and Green. Those four gave you 83 combined points in San Antonio, so also taking into account the potential Lively showed off, an extra three or four triples from Grant would be all Dallas would need. Grant made 43% of his 21 threes in last year's conference finals, and in the conference semis a year before that, absolutely carried Boston with a game-high 27 in Game 7 against Milwaukee. He was a great fit next to two high-ego superstars in Tatum and Brown, which will make it an easy adjustment for him to play next to another two in Doncic and Irving. The Mavericks are comprised of the shot-creating talent that it takes to get it done against the most athletic defenses on the planet, night in, night out, a luxury that bodes well when that intensity climaxes in the postseason. From top to bottom around their two top weapons, there clearly weren't the most well-suited or valuable pieces last year. Now though, with the seeming to be draft steal of Lively, along with criminally underrated signing at a great price in the not even 25 Grant Will, early signs point to Luka and Kyrie having the adequate amount of screen setting, floor spacing, and defense to play winning basketball. Where will Dallas finish out West this year in your opinion though? Let me know down below for a chance at next video shoutout. Today's shoutout goes to Christian Moore for saying Derek White is without a doubt the most underrated player on this team, second team all defense and not in the top 100. Not only did he lead the league in blocks for guards last year, but he shot 38% from three. His ability to step up offensively flies under the radar because of all the star power this team has had. Can't forget about the player of the week nod he earned when Smart went down last year. Great take, appreciate every answer. Deflo signing off. Huh? Of course. Since when did you start watching baseball? About two years ago. <laughs>